Hey everyone, it's Jennifer, and once again, thanks for stopping by. Today I wanted to show you how you could use colored pencils and Gamsol to add shading and highlighting to a stamped image. I've shown this before with uh, Copic markers and with other forms of coloring, but I wanted to show you with colored pencils because I think this is super easy. Now this was the teacher or the card that I gave to my son's teacher this year. I wish I could have shared it earlier so that you might have an idea for a teacher card. However, I waited till the last minute, so that's why this is going up late. Now, before we dive into that colored pencil technique, I wanted to go ahead and get our die cutting done and show you a few products that I found. I have a piece of Desert Storm craft cardstock here. I'm going to put this into my Big Shot. I have a die from Little Anchor Designs that puts these little slits in a pattern and a background, and it is just so cool how this works. Now I'm putting this into my Big Shot on my magnetic plate. Many people have asked why I don't use the magnetic plate. It's because I keep it in with my Vagabond, what I use for my normal crafting, not for my videos. But I've decided to go ahead and show it in the video. It really holds the dies in place and keeps them from shifting. So I didn't have to tape this together. So I can make sure that my pattern ends up right in the center of my card where I placed it. So there you can see that great pattern you get from that little anchor design uh, die. And you can see that stayed in the center because of that magnetic plate. And I'll show you more of that in the future. Now I'm using this set of dies from Little B uh, to create the heart. Now I'm going to show you more about this die set and other die sets from Little B at the end of this video, so keep stay tuned to see those. But I wanted to show you just quickly here what it is that I'm using. I'm going to take one of the hearts, this is the outline die, and then one of the other hearts that does little X's, which is just a nice finishing touch around the heart. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a heart from some white uh, Nina cardstock here. I'm just going to place this right onto my white paper. Now you'll see with the magnetic die it'll stay right in place and it won't shift on me. Then I'm going to take the die with the little X's. This just kind of cuts or scores these tiny little X's into the paper. Just a fun finishing touch. I'm going to hold, put it right in the center of the cutting heart and run this through my die cut machine. Because of that magnetic plate, which holds the dies in place, they won't shift. If you want to, you can just use a piece of tape to hold them in place as you run it through. Okay, so now I'm going to pop my heart out here and you can see that great little like faux stitching, those lines that you get on the edge of the heart. I love that finishing touch. It's a great die set. And again, I'll show you it at the end of this video. Then finally for die cutting, I'm going to cut this great thanks die cut from Lawn Fawn out of some glitter paper. So now that we have all of our die cutting done, let's go ahead and dive into the stamping and the colored penciling on this um, apple shape here. So I'm stamping with Hero Art Shadow Ink. This is Pale Tomato. It's a great soft red ink. And this is a stamp set from Clearly Besotted. All the products I use are linked below in the YouTube description, by the way, and also over on my blog. And for the little leaf on the top of my apple, I am using some Green Hills uh, Shadow Ink from Hero Arts. You could use any kind of permanent dye ink on this, anything that won't mess up when you add moisture to it, add water to it. The Hero Arts Shadow Inks are great for this. Okay, now it's time to add some colored pencil. I'm going to speed this up so it doesn't take as long. I'm using Prisma colored colored pencils. They're great quality. Um, I also like Spectrum Noir's colored pencils too. What I'm doing is going in with a red that's a little bit darker than my ink and just coloring over it. Now you'll notice I'm not making any effort to blend this. I'm just doing it super quick. We're going to add some Gamsel to this, which will do all the blending for us. You could actually spend even less time than I'm doing here. Now I'm going in with a slightly darker red here and putting some color right around the outside kind of bottom edge there. And you can see how it's just building up color. I could have skipped that lighter red pencil I added and just do this darker red if, if you wanted to because the Gamsel will blend it for you with the ink in the background. Okay, now that I've added all of my red, I decided I wanted to kind of have a little yellow highlight on the top corner of the apple, kind of like you do with some of the apples that you might buy. So I'm going to just scribble some yellow on here. No effort at all, just scribbled on as hard as I can, just to put a little bit of yellow color down. I'll blend that in a moment. Okay, so now for this stem, I'm going in with a green color here, and you can see I'm just quickly scribbling down some dark green. Uh, I'll even come in with another dark green and scribble down even more, just so we can, the more darkness you add to parts of this, the more shading you'll get. I will also add some brown to the stem and some darker green to the tips of the leaves. So now it's time to do the Gamsol. Now Gamsol is a product that I use to blend my colored pencils easily. Now Gamsol is an odorless mineral spirits and you can buy it in a lot of art shops but I like this little container from Inky Antics because it keeps it contained and you don't have to have an open container of this stuff because you really don't want to be breathing a ton of it in. 
Now this is a paper stump and it's just compressed paper that's kind of uh, formed into a pencil shape. All you do is you touch the tip of this to your uh, the top of this Inky Antics Gamsel bottle and you just blend and scribble over the color penciling that you've done. You can see it's all blending very easily. This makes using color pencils so simple. I find this much easier to do than Copic markers. You can get blending with much less effort. And I'll do more videos on this in the future. You can even go in with a white pencil to add some highlighting and then come in again with your Gamsol to um, at, you know, kind of blend it together. Now to clean off your um, paper stub stump before you move on to another color, you can um, kind of sand it off with sanding paper. I just scribble off to the side as you uh, saw me do there. Here I'm filling in some of the white that I accidentally colored outside of the line. I just use a white pen for that and nobody will ever know. So you can use colored pencils and Gamsol to quickly add shading onto your stamping. It's so easy to do. I would test it out with whatever inks you may have, but I know they work great with the Hero Art Shadow inks. Now that was just a quick introduction to how you can add some coloring and shading with Gamsol and colored pencils. I'll link here and in my YouTube description to some other videos, and I promise I'll be showing some more in the future. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull our card together. I trimmed down my uh, craft colored piece and now I've created my note card. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue these pieces together. I wanted to have a little bit of white showing around the edge of this card. So now to add my greeting onto this, I have this delicate die cut. I like to use multi-medium in the matte finish to apply to the back of the die cuts. Now people have asked, this is the same product here. Uh, the Studio is what it used to be named, but now it's just the multi-matte medium. It's from Ranger and it's the exact same product, just a new packaging, just in case you see them. This is a very inexpensive product and it stays very tight. So even if you use metal or sequins or whatever, this is a great adhesive to use. I also like on the back of die cuts like this one where it's hard to apply some adhesive because you can just stick your finger into it and just spread it around on the back of your die cut and you're ready to go. You could also just put tiny dots of it along the die cut in different places. Uh, that would also work. Now I decided I want my heart to kind of hang off the side of the card, so I'm going to put my thanks die cut over to the left. Now I wanted to kind of keep this card simple and not take too long, so that's why I use glitter paper from Die Cuts with a View to die cut this greeting, because it adds a little something without taking up any more time. If you don't have this paper, you could always coat your die cut with um, like that multi-matte medium or multi-medium in the matte finish and add glitter. But I love the glitter papers because it, the glitter doesn't rub off. Okay, so now let's go ahead and kind of pull this all together. I wanted to pop up my apple, of course, so I'm using Cooltac clear foam tape. I like this stuff, but it is a little pricey, so I cut it up into tiny pieces and it works fantastic. So you'll see me put this on the back of the apple. If you don't have this and you want something that's clear so that if you look from the side of this tiny little apple you won't see anything but clear, you could roll mini glue dots together into like a little ball and use that for some dimension. Or you could just use regular white foam tape. Now I also wanted to add my heart with some dimension also. So I'm just going to use my favorite white um, foam tape. This is, comes on a large roll so it lasts forever and I don't have to worry about being um, cautious about how much I use. I'm gonna put a lot of this on the back of here and I'll add it to my card. I'm gonna use my T ruler to make sure I get this straight. So I'm lining up the top of the heart with the bottom point of the heart just to make sure that I have this on here straight because I'm afraid I'm kind of going crooked here. Yep, and my apple is a little crooked, so I'm just going to straighten that out. That's one of the great things about that tape. You can kind of move it around. I'm just going to cut the side of my heart off here, and there we have our card. Now, as always, I wanted some shimmer to my apple. I always like to finish cards off that are simple with a little bit of shimmer, so I'm using my Wink of Stella glitter marker. This is the clear finish. I just color it over my colored pencil here, and it won't mess it up. You don't have to worry about it. It will mess up white gel pen though, so keep that in mind. If you're doing this with white gel pen, you want to do that after. So I did add a few little white dots to the leaves of my apple too, with the white gel pen, but after that Wink of Stella glitter marker dried, because you don't want to do that first. Okay, so now that I've finished off this card, some new products and how you can use colored pencils and Gamsol to add some dimension to a stamped image, I wanted to show you a closer look at those dies I mentioned at the beginning of this video. These are from Little B. They are pretty inexpensive considering how much you get in a set. This is the heart set that I used before. It comes on this big, big magnetic uh, folder and it has a magnet flap to close it. 
I love that there were so many hearts in that set. This is another set from Little Bee. Look at all those gradients. This is fantastic. You can cut little banners with these words cut from them. Um, lots of things that you can do with these words. Another set that I really love is this cursive set. And I'll probably be using this a lot. You can mix and match words together to create different greetings. And I like die cut greetings because you can stick them on anywhere. You don't have to think about having something flat to stamp on. So people have been asking about these dies, and I got them and I really like them so I just wanted to show you. If you're interested in these or any of the products I used on my card, they're linked below in my YouTube description or you can head over to my blog at Jennifer McGuire Inc. for so much more information. Thanks once again for stopping by and I hope you'll do it again soon.